Hey everybody, this is So Many Sequels. I'm Josh. Andrew. I'm Garrett. And I'm and... David. Man, it's good to see you guys. Hi. Yeah, I know, right? What a lovely it's time been to a... be alive. It's been a while. I know, it feels of. like it's been a long well, time. Well, it feels like. We've not seen it, it, uh, most of each other in person in a long time. Yeah. Um, but that's, you know, kind of par for the course with the whole mm-hmm. what's going on out there. Yeah, um, yeah. Today on the show, we're gonna we're gonna jump right into uh, to our review for this week, which is going to be a brand new, well, a new Netflix film, a new 2021 Netflix film called Malcolm and Marie. Mm-hmm. This uh, came out. What was it? February uh, 5th um, yeah, on Netflix. Yeah. It was starring John David Washington and Zendaya. This uh, movie was directed and written by Sam Levinson. Um, Zendaya Stans may know his name from Euphoria, the HBO show that she is the star of. Um, I was trying to look real quick what his filmography is. He's definitely written and directed some movies, um, but honestly, none that I am aware of. So there's that. But... What's interesting about this movie is it was uh, completely written, produced, filmed everything during the uh, coronavirus pandemic that started early in 2020. It was filmed in secret over the summer Mm -hmm. of 2020. Uh, It only has the two actors. There's uh, literally no one else in it. Um, And it's what's interesting about it is, you know... A lot of most of us have some level of, of uh, background in in theater, and I like the kind of movie that is a conversation between two characters because it, it oftentimes felt like oh this could be a play, it felt like to me which was cool, but yeah. um, the basic premise is they have just gotten home. It's the middle of the night. I think they say one a.m. Uh, they're a couple. Um, John David Washington's character Malcolm has just premiered a movie that he made. He is a filmmaker. Um, and they are coming back to celebrate, but uh, ultimately they go through a bit of a tumultuous period in their relationship throughout the film. Bit of a um, fight. Yeah. Bit of a fight. Bit of a fight and make up, fight and make up, fight mm-hmm. and make a lot of that. Um, so suffice to say, there will be spoilers for this movie in this episode. So without further ado, how did everyone feel about Malcolm and Marie? Who wants to go first? Oh, I feel like I was uh, the first. How about you, Andrew? Andrew, go I, first. I thought it was uneventful. Uneventful. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Do you want That's to expand? One word, calling back to season two. <laughs> <laughs> you want to expand on that? At all? Oh, oh. Uh, <laughs> Are you just done speaking we, for the show now? <laughs> I thought we were just gonna go around the table here. Um, no, no. We. I mean, no, we just, are, but I thought you'd say more than one word. <laughs> Well, like I thought that it was like it was uneventful, okay. Because there's a lot of there's a lot of dialogue going on here, and what I like about this is, yeah, just like what you said just a second ago, it is like a play. It's it's just unfolding before us like that. Um, the only event here is is that um, John David I don't know what his name is in the movie. Um, Malcolm. <laughs> Malcolm. There's only two characters, Malcolm and Marie. <laughs> and the white lady at LA Times. That's Come on, the, Andrew. That's... Come on. Everybody leave. Everybody oh, leave. Oh, two people. Well, it's the David and Josh show now. This is going back to the to. news. Back to the All news. All right. Um, <laughs> but anyway, Malcolm. Like, Malcolm. <laughs> oh, now Andrew froze. Fuck, I broke <laughs> oh, He broke everyone. He broke the internet. It's all mm-hmm. done. I don't remember his name. Hmm. Uh, yeah, soak this in. Come back. Anyway, to, like, come back get in it. The, the thing is, is that like I don't, I don't, I, I like the dialogue between the two characters, Malcolm and Marie, are are really is really like <laughs> intriguing to a point. <laughs> Well, you yeah. gave us our you gave Go us our on. social that's media clip for this week, so that's good. There's there's our Facebook video right there. Oh, brother! 
Yeah, we're moving on from you. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna take over next. <laughs> um, I I I can see what you're saying, um, it, but I guess it depends on how you are defining um, an event, because in the sense of like something out of the norm happening or something big, I guess it is uneventful, but it is very eventful in the sense of their relationship and the conversations they have where there are times where you literally don't know, like, are these people, are they happy now or are they still mad at each other? I can't tell. And then something crazy happens. Either yeah. Malcolm says something stupid or Marie pushes him a little bit um, and it all comes unraveling again. It's it's a very, in terms of that, I think it, it can be seen as as quite eventful. Um, you know, most of their- they, It's they more get, like a tug of war. Yes, it's a tug of war for sure. They get very in depth in their like uh, views and criticisms of the movie industry, the the critical industry in particular. Yeah. Um, and then on top of that, I mean, they get they get involved in their lives in in um, uh, uh, Marie's addiction pa uh, past with drugs and how he according to him, like saved her life and brought her back up and how she's been a big part of an inspiration for his movie, how these two people like, I, I feel like there's a better way to say this than what I'm thinking, but it, it's like they feed off each other and sometimes that's bad, <laughs> but sometimes it leads to big things. Overall, I thought it was very interesting. I liked the movie quite a bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's kind of funny. It's hard to, the movie kind of goes into this long dry, diatribe in the middle where it sort of critiques film critique. Mm -hmm. So it feels like a lot of the things that normally you might say are like, well, that's just going to feed right into the, what the movie uh, said we were going to said we were going to say. Um, I do think what you said, Josh, does, this does feel like a play. It's a classic two-hander. You have, you know, your main actors, your actress and actress, your actor and actress, or just two actors, and they just go at it. They are each other's obstacle, and you know, they have their goals, their their agendas that they're trying to achieve, but the other one is just holding them back. And I'll tell you what, I I hate to do this because it feels kind of it feels kind of like a disservice to this film to compare it to another, but this really kind of felt like uh, this really kind of reminded me of like marriage story because it's all okay. built on the performance and some pretty decent, like realistic style dialogue of just brutal mean fights. Uh, I remember just sitting there and just being like, I, I was just sitting there <laughs> this morning I was watching it and I was just like, dude, take the L, take the L, just get out, get out. <laughs> All right. See so many you know, times, just you know, shut up. <laughs> just hey, you know, you put your hands up, you go on the ropes, you know, and you just you just you know wait for the count out, you know, just get out of there. Um, this fight ain't worth having. And yeah, they just kept going. Like you said, there were ebbs and flows where they seemed to be back on each other's good sign, and they were right back out. Um, I want to talk about the one of the aspects that I liked. There was a quite a few um like long uh, like one shot takes that I thought were really cool. It really kind of helped it kind of feel like, like you were living in that moment with them. That was a good use of the one shot. Um, there's one where towards the very beginning where Malcolm's just pacing around the room and the camera would follow him and then come back and stay with her and he would continue on and he would come back around. And it was like, he would pick the camera up and go again. You know, I keep it in my mic and they would just, and, and, and it really kind of helped it feel like it was a good rhythm. I was never quite bored. I was always kind of, I was always interested in what they were talking about. Um, but like you said, Andrew, there's no real plot here. If that's something that's um, important to you. Like if you like, you know, like a, a, the story to kind of have stages of moving up to things, that's not really here. This is really a, you know, you know, time lapsed a little bit. Three, uh, you know, three hour fight that these two people are going through and you're living in that moment with them. It's a, it's a complete moment in time. 
Um, and it gets brutal. They say some mean, mean stuff to each other. So uh, be ready for that. But, you know, I really appreciate the performances. Um, I know there's probably tons of, there's probably tons of political takeaways you could get from this, of cultural takeaways, those kind of things. But I don't know. I, I, I don't really have much to offer on that that's going to be like that very original. I just think Zendaya, I feel like, really gave it her all too. Like at the end, like I was just like, man, Zendaya is killing this. And John David Washington is really good in it too, but I couldn't take my eyes off her. She was that last speech <clears throat> that she gives this uh, speech uh, where she says thank you a lot. Man, it was great. Brutal. It was great. So, I mean, I'll just give it to give it up for those two and uh for the 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 one shot takes i've read a lot about the movie um and i find it interesting that so many people critics and other people are really focusing on the elements of film critique because i don't think that's the main driver at all i think that you can easily replace i think the critique is there to be symbolic of their whole relationship and you can replace film critique with art critique, with music critique, any kind of person that is a creative that gets critiqued. I don't think that the idea of this movie was to harp on movie critics. I think that was just a driver mm -hmm. based on everything that I've read. I think that the, the, it's an important part because he gets so critical of that one person, the LA Times reviewer, over and over, or at least a two like 10 minute rants about this critique. But throughout the whole movie, he's doing the exact same thing with Marie. And that's why I think that he is being critiqued. I don't think it's a take on film criticism. And that seems to be a lot of what I'm getting at. I think that it's deeper in that this is about the characters. I think it's just looking at the layers of the characters. Malcolm is a self-absorbed person who Feel, it has that stereotype that comes with a lot of artists who get angry because their work is interpreted this way when they want it interpreted this way, but they still got a good review. So they're still finding something to fight with no matter what. And throughout this whole movie, he's being critiqued on how he has treated Marie. And every time, instead of hearing what she's saying for the most part, he picks the one small thing that he can fight back at rather than listening and understanding. And then the second time he finally understands and then they make up. And I think the movie gets repetitive after that where they, they do it again and they do it again. Each person has really good moments where they win. Um, the uh, director said that he wanted it to feel like Ali Frazier where he would purposely end the night with one of the speeches from the other person to challenge them as actors to be like, this is, this is what we have to do because of all the limitations that we have. So you have to put out your best performances. So I wanted them going their own separate ways thinking, I can't have them win. I gotta show, I gotta show them up tomorrow. And you really get that dynamic back and forth. There's so many moments where, you know, the whole scene in the bathtub is fantastic for both of them. Um, John and Malcolm is such a jerk. And then when he gets to express his love for her, like he finally says, like, this is what I'm feeling about this. You feel for him and you feel that it's real, but he was just a jerk. And then you see Zendaya being able to take all of that and just her emotion of taking everything in and reacting to that. Just that alone is incredibly powerful. So I think that there's a lot of misplaced um, focus on the wrong thing in the wrong emphasis. I think that the critique aspects is there because that's his personality. I think he's a guy who's being critiqued and then lashing out whenever he's faced with something that he's is insecure about himself. And so I think, I think that a lot of the reviews I read were focusing on the take on film criticism, but I don't think that was part of it. I don't think that was the, the message at all. Um... I, think it was, I think it was like maybe a B plot. I wonder, though, it almost feels like um, destiny for this movie, in a way, to be interpreted by real-world critics in a negative fashion when that exact behavior is a driving force for Malcolm and his movie. 
um, you almost wonder if um, Sam Levinson and and the creators are looking at negative reviews and chuckling to themselves and thinking this is exactly this is exactly why we wrote this. I actually um, found it a really. You have interpreted this in a in a way I didn't want want to, and just like the character, that is hilarious. <laughs> Well, there's a there's a really interesting backstory, and if we can, I'll, I'll throw some links out. We can throw in the show notes or, or in, on the YouTube in the notes there. But yeah, go ahead. I was a, just looking into this myself. There's really interesting um, interviews with Zendaya and um, Levitson because basically, I think they are getting a lot of neg- negative reviews, and they're trying to be like, "Here's what we were doing." And I think one of the one of the most interesting stories is that uh, the director's last movie, Assassination Nation was incredibly panned by the LA Times. And there are two white reviewers, white women reviewers for the LA Times, and one of them gave the bad review for his movie. And so I think a lot of interpretation that's being is that he's using it as a vehicle uh, to vent his frustrations. And I think that's why it's getting a lot of attention. But in his interview, he's like, no, (laughs) that's not, that has nothing to do with it. They are in LA at an LA premiere, it would make sense that it would be the LA Times reviewer that he spoke to. Yeah. And, and that was kind of the logic that he was, he was talking about. And, and it's just a really interesting uh, conversation that he and Zendaya have about some of the controversy that this movie's getting. Um, a lot of it is also some that I didn't fully understand, but it seems like it's getting a lot of interesting uh, negative criticism. Yeah, that's what I'm saying too. It seems only right that uh, critics would find a way to make this about themselves. <laughs> uh, maybe it's not about you, <laughs> and you're, and and the fact that it's got you a little hot under the skin is uh, because you see some truth in it. And and you know? back to, to Andrew's point about this not really having much of a plot, I agree, but I don't think that's a problem. I think that sometimes no. I think that. I look at it like a, an episode of, of Seinfeld to an extent where like, this is a movie about nothing, but it's a very good movie about nothing. And, and what I want to emphasize is that is that that's not really a bad point. Like not movies. I, I personally think that movies with no plot are typically the best ones. I mean, if you go, if you go back in history, if you go, if you go back in history, I mean, it's, it happens time and time again. Uh, take a look at almost any biopic or biopic, however you pronounce it. I mean, pretty much any biopic is is has no plot. It's just a central character. That's all it is. Um, but like this in particular, th- there, there's one thing I will say. There's one thing I will say that people just don't understand. It. It's like it's like what goes on behind the scenes of movies. So in other words, it's a movie about a movie. More often than not, that like I feel like people are not interested in that portion. Like, like we, we as movie people are interested about that. The general population isn't. It's for a certain audience. I agree with it's that. For a, yeah, it's for a certain audience, especially whenever it comes to like whenever it comes to about about making movies or making a play or doing whatever, or even making music, because in fact that, but anyway, but like nobody's interested in the map about that process, unless you're really wanting to get into that. Otherwise you don't really care. Um, The dial, uh, what I want to, what I want to say about this is just like the meat of the movie here really lies within, really lies within the argument. I mean, you got to, you have to keep the argument, you have to keep the conversation going in order to, in order to really like fuel this fire, because otherwise we're not going to be interested. A lot of what they're talking about really, or a lot of what they're talking about really just pertains to them. Like, it, it, but like what you get out of it here is a lot of substance. And what I love in particular is that Zendaya is doing her own thing and she's great at it. Mm-hmm. And John David Washington is not following in the footsteps of his famous dad because he was in uh, he was in Black Klansman. 
he was in um, uh, uh, Tenet. And Tenet, like when, when I when I watch when I watch those two movies, it makes me think of like it makes me think of Denzel Washington, like he's just impersonating his dad. Here, he isn't, and he's kind of going out on his own limb, and I love that. I love that he's actually artistically expressing himself through this way. And because I, I will say that anytime you see like uh, the child of a famous actor or anything like that, more often than not, they get criticized for trying to channel what, trying to channel their dad, trying to hey. channel their mom. Yeah. And that's, that's what I get out of this is that like if the power is in the performances and both of them, they hate each other. But it's one of those things where you like you love to see yeah. you, you want to see the argument, like you want to see the resolution. Yeah, there's yeah. a couple of things you said in there I wanted to to touch on. Um, you brought up the idea of of the audience being or a general audience is being less interested in the in the conversation topic, um, the behind the scenes of a movie and the film criticism. What I liked about that is that the movie is is aware of that. And makes Zendaya the the vehicle for those people um, in the moment where she really breaks down the idea of of uh, Malcolm and everyone around him in that industry just being a hoe. She says, mm -hmm. uh, "Y'all are just hoes, and none of it matters. Um, we don't care about anything. Um, yeah. You're just out there hoeing." And that's fine. Do that. That's great. I'm not saying it's bad, but like we don't care. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. it was nice that the movie was aware of that since you brought that up. Yeah, it's one of the things that usually gets left off is like a movie will make like a big statement or or anybody a person will make like a big statement and like there's written in a counter argument, but people are already distracted by the first thing. They mm -hmm. can't have, you know, so like, yeah, Zendaya checks him on all that stuff. She's like, you got a yeah. good review. You know, right. All the negative one, things. All the negative the one that. negative thing you're focusing on is within the uh, the context of this was a great thing you know so yeah you know yeah. maybe take a step back and chill um and i i agree with you too andrew i think john david washington has a ton of charisma uh he's he is he is a lot like his father but he's also his totally his own performer um mm -hmm. and uh, i really uh, i didn't like his character i would say uh i i loved his performance though because it was just like I wanted to tell him to shut up, you know, yeah. or I wanted to be like, you guys, you guys are having, this is a, this is an awful night. Yeah, have this I, conversation in the morning. I didn't, uh, I didn't, I didn't, I, I, I'll agree with you. Like towards the end of it, I'm like, you know, good for him for his debut, but man, he's just, uh, just a sour person to be around. I wouldn't want to hang yeah. around that. Malcolm, yeah. Malcolm is a great person up until he stops dancing toward the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> like he's yeah. he's great yeah. fun uh, then. Here's a, here's a question. I'm gonna piggyback off of something that you guys said about um, Marie being his like check, and I agree with that. I think that she really grounds him. And here's here's an interesting question to pose: Do you guys think that the relationship is toxic or not? No. Yeah, probably. Mm, it was. I yeah it's a toxic relationship i mean that so, the, that's those weren't normal fights um, not knowing where their whole not knowing their entire story you know it's kind of hard to like look in and say fair. because it seems like a really bad night but it does seem right. like i don't know because they when i did have a this, lot they seem I, to have a, they, they had a lot to pull out on each right other. but here's here's the thing they had a lot of interesting moments and i think this is where the the critique aspect comes into it of they really do seem to genuinely love each other throughout this entire movie. Mm -hmm. I don't think that I don't think that anybody's like intentionally manipulating them until they are having the fight and then they are intentionally trying to be mean. But I don't think there's any kind of uh, hatred towards one another. I think that this is a like very monologue heavy stylized conversation that needs to be had with people because a lot of times people are projecting their own insecurities onto other people and see other things. And then that doesn't build up, but it builds up in our own heads. And so while this person is thinking this, this person may have no idea 
that the other person is. And so a lot of what I see, especially from Marie, is not necessarily her trying to be mean. It's like, here's what you're doing. And I need you to know that this is how you're making me feel. And if this is the first time that either one of them have had this conversation, then I don't necessarily think it's toxic. I think it's important that these conversations be had with people Mm -hmm. when things like this are are, um, being bad. And I think that this movie is actually weirdly doing a decent job of saying, you can have disagreements and issues that are bothering you and have these discussions in a good way that isn't just fully attacking. And then when you do attack, you realize it and then you pull back. So I think that this is an interesting argument because you don't know their situation. If this has happened seven times, then you got to end it. But is this the first time? Yeah. And then um, I only bring this up because Zendaya, this is part of the conversation with Zendaya and uh, Levinson. And she, they kind of say the same thing about the takeaway. The, they want the movie to be is learn how to take critique and grow from it, whether that's as a, an artist or mm-hmm. as a human being. And so if the takeaway is they have this horrible fight throughout this night and they both learn and grow from it because they do love each other, then that's good. Mm -hmm. Or if they realize that, you know, they're not meant to be together, but the other person made valid points, do they take that information and then move with it? So I think that, again, that's a little bit deeper, but that's why I think that this movie is really interesting Mm -hmm. in how it's presented. Yeah, I mean, you got a good point. I mean, it may not necessarily be, necessarily be like entirely toxic, but it is a situation. You know, you have to share a lot of your insecurities when you're in like a, a very committed monogamous relationship like that. If you kind of keep that stuff buried in, that's really when those things become toxic because then it becomes all about passive aggressive, like selfish attitudes that sort of push away that person they will probably be stronger after this. You know, I mean, it, it, it didn't end with somebody getting stabbed. So, you know, the, the chance for growth is there. Um, they're both still there at the end of the day. So, yeah, I mean, you have to, I, I don't say like, I don't think you should like actively try to start stuff, but no. sometimes you have to just express yourself and say, Hey, this is, some, and, you know, she's coming from a place of insecurity. He's kind of coming from a defensive nature that's sort of masking his own problems. So, yeah, I mean, I think it's a really, for the most part, a well-structured argument. Like like Marriage Story, though, it is emotionally draining. So if you're going to watch this, go in knowing that, uh, you know, it, it's going to get kind of, it's going to get kind of ugly. You're going to get invested in some person's point of view, and then you're probably going to switch between arguments. You might be on her side for some, you might be on his side, yeah, probably going to be mostly on her side. But I hope so. <laughs> yeah. But, you know it's it's kind of uh it's kind of well balanced like that i also want to bring up that um this was i mean about the element of black and white Mm -hmm. um i like the element of black and white personally because especially in more modern movies because now i mean back in the day movies didn't have a choice Right. Uh, you shot it in black and white, you shot it in black and white. That was the way it is. Now, since we have the advent of color, um, the advent, the advent of color, whatever. Well, no, it's the advent, but well, I would the, say the advent of color was probably like 70 years ago. Yeah. Well, like, you were correct. I mean, you, the word was but, right. <laughs> but like, uh, it's still new for him. Yeah. Give him, give him a minute. <laughs> uh, black and white anymore is more or less used as a device. It's a choice. And I feel like, say what? It's a choice for sure. Yeah. And this one in particular, I feel like enhances more or less just the characters. Because when when everything's in a black and white world, kind of like what it is, kind of like what this is, uh-huh. it allows you to focus more on the people that's involved. And... And hone in a little bit more on what they're trying to say. That being said, if there's one thing I will say that I have to take away from this that I got really tired of, normally I don't get tired of it. Man, they use the F word a lot. You don't See, know what I, you I, mean I, by I that. I was going to say this, but I genuinely don't have any idea what you're talking about. Like, every, I felt like every 
verb and word that was used made sense in a context of like this is how people would talk during an argument a very heated argument but i Maybe certainly don't remember it being it ab- didn't even occur this over to me. and over again no See, like after a while like my, my thing is about using about cussing like this especially in saying a swear saying a swear <laughs> like if so we're already this isn't a gonna, christmas movie yeah if you're gonna drop a swear if you're yeah. going to drop a swear, then what you need to do is, is that needs to be uh, strategic. Oh, no, but it not doesn't. In a, movie like this. in a movie like this, where people are just talking, that's how people talk. I still don't think that's they said it that much. That's how people talk. Who wants to go back and watch it and do a swear count? <laughs> I mean, that's sure probably a good number, number but look, I think, I think this one goes in with that kind of, like, yeah. I, there's not that there's not that i don't feel like when you first start this movie at least from my perspective i didn't have any allure of this being like a like a nice like pg movie or anything like no, that i, did, so I like, didn't think that either i, I knew yeah. it wasn't going to be that way i just didn't know it was going to be that profane like they just they were tossing it around like a like a tennis ball like two people, like two who people don't, in honestly and in, in terms of in terms of uh uh, uh what's the, even the word here for uh uh moral uh, traditionalism the movie for me the thing that stands out more is a lot of the the sexual activity which is between two consenting adults so it's all fine but uh there's a, there was a lot of controversy going into the movie about the age discrepancy between john david washington and zendaya uh i think something like isn't it like 19 20 years between the two of them 12 i don't like, think it's that yeah I is it not that much that 24 36 yeah. 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 That's 24 and 36. Well, so which is, so there's a bit of a, a significant a of age gap, there. but it know. is it but really, at the same you know. time that happens every day also. Like, I know it's not as, it's not that, it's not that unusual, but it, you know, if, if, if she was know. underage and, and that was the situation, then it would be very un- uncomfortable. And, and I mean, they're not that far from was trying to portray it, but she is a grown woman and he is a grown man. And, and I get it, but like, they're not trying to portray anything else. They're adults in a relationship. I know, but I'm just talking about optics wise. If you're at, if, if that's the kind of thing that makes you uncomfortable, it's worth noting. I feel like swear words. I don't know. I don't really remember them now. That's the thing is swear words in movies are so common now uh, that like, I, I didn't even honestly note. I did notice at one point because they, they, they stuck it into a word. Like they uh, suck it in between the in between the syllables mm-hmm. of the word authenticity, and I was like, yeah. and I noticed, and I remember that one, but it's so common now, and uh, I don't even, I don't know, I, I, I think, yeah, I don't know. Basically, we can't believe you even noticed. It's rated R, I'm sure. Is this rated R? I think. Yeah. It's probably oh, rated probably. R. I mean, it is. Why would? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like. I don't know if you guys again. If you looked into much of the production of the movie, but again, because this was made during the quarantine times, what I think is really interesting is how this movie got funded. Is that everybody involved basically invested their own money? So um, the crew. It was basically they used a lot of the cast of Euphoria because they weren't going to work. Zendaya was like, write something that we can work on. So they went through all the hoops to to get everything approved. They used that crew and they invested their money to ownership. And so whatever they sold, the, they, I think it was, had, had a budget of $2.5 million and they sold it to Netflix for $30 million. So everyone that invested on the crew gets what I assume, whatever percentage back because they helped fund the movie. And I think that, I don't know if that is something that people can look for like in the future, but I think it's a good idea that if, you know, if I'm being, if I'm working on this and I invest money and the movie gets made with me on it, maybe that could give me a little bit of a cutback. Like if I give you $10 and that's X percent of the budget, then I get X percent of the profits. Yeah. yeah. Well, and that's a thing. It's definitely a thing right now, but I think it's, it's mostly tied to, to box office, which is why so many actors are really upset right now about Warner brothers in particular, because their contracts stipulate a a percentage back on box office returns, but putting it on HBO Max hurts the box office returns. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, there's definitely it's a gamble because I mean, 
It is. The movie also could have been terrible and no one wanted to buy it and it would have exactly. just been forgotten. But it worked yep. out this time that there was a bit of a bidding war. But that's the same stake that studios make. It is. And like, if I give you $10 in a $20 million movie, that's point percentage that I would get kicked back anyway. My, my thing is, yeah. and, and I know, I know Netflix doesn't release these numbers, but like, Correct. like, I mean, I wonder if they're able because of like their viewership, I wonder if they're able to generate a gross. I don't know how they would do that, but well, Netflix put is putting it in theaters on a limited basis so that it can be awards eligible, obviously. Um, so mm. there, but but Netflix only really does that out of technicality and don't seem to care about box office returns no. because they're, I mean, they're sustainable. They make such an enormous amount of money <laughs> that I don't think it matters to them. <laughs> no. It's really nutty. Like, I mean, when you have 200 million subscribers at just like we do, at <laughs> minimum of like ten dollars a month, minimum. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyone? Any final thoughts on uh, on Malcolm and Marie? This feels like a, a good ending point for that discussion. Um. No. no, nothing really to add. I'll be honest with you. I was no, looking into uh, theatrical release, and I guess they did put it in theaters the weekend of January 29th in some locations. Okay. But uh, I'm not really seeing anything from that. So. I'm sure they're trying to hit some eligibility window um, there. Okay. Well, let's uh, move on then to our letterbox game, which is going to be run by David this week. He won the game last time. So uh, he's going to run it this time. That's right. It's the letterbox games where we go to our favorite uh, movie review site, Letterbox, um, where you can join in and put your own movie reviews in. You can follow us, uh, so many sequels uh, pod, I think, right, on Letterbox. I think so, something and, like that. And uh, you can follow all of us individually. We'll have, I don't know, maybe we'll have our... our need to be now. like real YouTubers where it's like, I got a whiteboard behind me with all of it written out. I know, I mean, I'll... Uh, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to get a new, uh, office set up in the future at some point. Maybe I'll set up a TV with it in the background. Or something. Oh yeah. That'd be cool. Um, so anyway, Malcolm and Marie directed by Sam Levinson, uh, has been reviewed by, can I get this number? No, I can't. It has been reviewed by a lot of people. Um, <laughs> sure. what do you guys think is the average score between zero and five? Uh, I don't know. Nobody's in last right now. So just, uh, I guess whoever wants to go. 3.2. I'm getting mine out there first. I was Today just about to Garrett. do the same. I'm going to go with 3.0. 3.0 from Josh. Andrew? <sighs> Solid consensus in the area so far. 2.8. A 2.8. All right, so 2.8 from Andrew. 3. We're separating 0. everything by 0. 0.2. Right, Josh. Yes, and then a 3.2 from Garrett. All right, so we're going to have to figure something out. Uh -oh. A tiebreaker is needed because oh, the no. score right now on Letterbox is, in fact, a 3.1. <laughs> Blast. 3.1. Yes, so we'll have to come up with a tiebreaker here, and what I'm going to say is um, I'll tell you what. Right now, I am looking at the most popular review. All right. Okay. I will read you the review. Okay. You tell me what star they gave it. All right. <laughs> whoever, comes, whoever comes closest. That's fun. I like it's that. It's the most popular review okay. right now for <laughs> Malcolm and Marie. You tell me what the score is. Okay. It's one sentence. Here we go. And if, we, if nobody gets, I mean, you, someone will get close. If Marriage Story was a Calvin Klein ad, <laughs> what is the star rating associated with that review? Um, <laughs> 2.7. No, two I can't do that. 2.5. A 2.5 from Josh. I'm going to go 2. A two from Garrett. So a 2.52. So the just, winner this week they is Garrett because it's a one and a half. Uh, one and a half? What's wow. wrong with a Calvin Klein ad? 
uh that's from uh that's from patron on letterboxd tara uh i'm not really sure how you'd look them up but anyway uh some pretty not great reviews are in the t- most popular um one review oh. is so good if you mute it <laughs> yeah what a lot of people, not, not people. Not karsten runquist <laughs> uh i don't want to, that one doesn't make any sense um fam squad says malcolm would hate letterboxd oh uh, for that's sure a, that's a three I mean, that's a good three. review <laughs> yeah um so i would say basically what i said they say my god just go to bed and discuss this in the morning that, <laughs> I, multiple <laughs> times i said you need to just go to bed yeah and i Stop just want to i want to end with this to to andrew's point of this movie being about now oh he's gone bye he didn't even want to hear my point wow he, that was picked- rude <laughs> Goodness gracious. Well, Ouch. you know what? We were almost... Oh, no, he's back. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Andrew, had you frozen? Oh, anyway. Or... Okay. There's a, there's, a line, there's a line in the movie where Zendaya says, or uh, Marie says, nothing productive is going to be said tonight. Yeah. And that is kind of a foreshadowing of the movie. She That's was true. correct. That's true. Nothing productive was said that night. Okay, well... Uh, that's it for uh, this episode of So Many Sequels. Find us online on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Letterboxd. So Many Sequels uh, or So Many Sequels Pod on all of those platforms. Oh, wait, we didn't give our reviews. Oh, you're right. Oh, yeah, our star ratings, yeah. Surprise. It's, it's hard coming back from a, from a hiatus. I know. We got to get back, get into the groove. Somebody call Madonna. <laughs> no. So uh, I'm just going to give it a, like, I'm just going to kind of give it a solid three. I think that uh honestly it's a full three just on performances for me um there's i feel like they just kind of like they that's the that's the star here is Zendaya and john david washington watch for them uh three stars for me um i also give it a three too i'm gonna throw it up just by a half star and give it a three and a half okay uh, uh, mm-hmm. Yep, yep. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bump it up to a four. I think it's a four for me. Oh wow! Well. Um, I, I stuff, really so. enjoyed it. I uh, was pretty engaged the whole time. Thought mm. they gave great performances. I laughed. I cringed. I <laughs> shook my fist at the screen. Um, <laughs> it got a, it got a lot of, it got a, every like range of emotion out of me. So I gotta give that at least a four. I think. Cool, cool. Um, so that gives us a 3.375 no, round for the up. group. So we'll, we'll, up to yeah. three and a half. we'll round that up to three and a half. I think that's right. That's just a little bit above the, the average letterbox review. So I think, yeah. you know, yeah. we're mm, in fine that's company. Fine. That's fine. The, the algorithm works. That's what we found <laughs> out between it the does. four of us. The algorithm works out. Uh, okay. So now... Go find us online. I already told you, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. We're also on Letterboxd. Um, oh, David, tell them about our Patreon. Oh, right, that's right. Your, yeah, you that's your pet. On pa- you can follow us on Patreon. Uh, I've been really bad about actually updating it. So my uh, my resolution for 2021 is to uh, update the Patreon with our new episodes, with our news updates when I can, and definitely put up some more uh, question threads uh, if you are on our Patreon, you'll get an advanced look at what we're going to do. Uh, sorry, current patrons, that you missed out on these first few episodes. But uh, as soon as uh, I know what we're doing next, I'll put it up. We'll get your questions and comments. We want you to be a part of the show. We have two tiers, dollar and three dollars. And uh, shout out, we only got two. We've only got two so far. But please join. All right, we're 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 working on it. We're working. Yeah, on it. we're coming yeah. along. We're trying. But check we're it out. Yeah, just go to Patreon.com and just type in so many sequels. We're going to be the only thing that comes up. So. Okay, great. Well, follow us on all those places. Um, of course, subscribe to the show if you haven't done that yet. Uh, we're on every podcast app you can think of, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, um, as well as the video version on our YouTube channel. Um, till then, we'll be back next time with another movie to review. Unless, Andrew, are you raising your hand? Go eat your mac and cheese. Mac and cheese, please. Oh, yeah, 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 mac and cheese. From the Can't believe we didn't bring up the mac and cheese. Yeah, that was some weird looking mac and cheese. Well, he ate it. was in black and white. He poked he was, it so much. Why are you he poking a, it? He was That's how he was man. eating it. He was, he was mad. He's yeah, he was mad. Eating. He was hangry eating. Oh. Anyway, mac and cheese. See you next time.